What's up everyone? All right, so today is day 24 of the small count challenge and today's been the best day so far of the challenge. Best day in terms of total profit, best day in terms of percent return. It's been a really good day. It was unexpected. I, I didn't see it coming at all. This is Tuesday in August and we ended up having the stock squeeze up over 100% between um, the gap, the, the news at 9 a.m. gapping up about 58% and then squeezing at the open into a halt, continuing higher all the way from a low of about five uh, to a high of 10. Very impressive, really, really nice action. And I capitalized on it, I did well on it. I got some great trades. Now in my big account, I did the classic Ross move of overstaying my welcome. So in this recap, I'm up 21,000 in the main account and I'm up 2,300 in the small account. Well, by the time I did the large account recap, recap I was up uh, just under 11,000 gave back about half of the profit. I overstayed my welcome, reminding, as always, how quickly profits can come and go. That's trading, easy come, easy go. My results are not typical. In case you thought trading was easy, I'll be the first to tell you it's not. Most traders lose money because trading is risky. So you should assume as a beginner trader, you'll also lose money with that assumption in mind, trading a simulator before you put real money on the line. You can practice as a simulator. You can use that sort of as proof of concept. You can export all of your metrics. You can see what your accuracy is, what your profit loss ratio is, and you can start to build a sense of confidence. Yes, it's a simulator, it's not real money, but if you're using real-time market data, it feels very, very similar. So I really encourage you to trade the simulator before you trade real money. But uh, in any case, I wanted to just get that, um, uh, make sure I communicate that to you clearly. So uh, today, yeah, it was a big surprise. I wasn't expecting this big move, but we got it. And uh, here we are, day 24. It counts up about 29% today. Tomorrow, I'll be starting with over $10,000 in the account. So now the account by itself is up over 100%. I started with a little over 4,000. So now we're all the way up to 10,000. Making progress and continuing to grow. So I'll be back at it. I'll see you here tomorrow for day 25. Please hit that thumbs up if you haven't already and enjoy the recap. All right, so today is day 24 small account challenge and I'm up $2,335.90. $2,000 came from BRPX, which is up 123% right now. Almost 30 million shares of volume. Had news at 9 a.m. and started off a little slow, but then really uh, picked up the pace on that squeeze into the open and then opened around seven, up to a halt at 7.11 open continued higher up to 860 i took my last trade at 830 then my last exit was 833. i didn't overstay my welcome in this um i from there picked up and got aggressive in my uh, main account and grabbed twenty one thousand dollars. well i was up 24 but gave back three thousand off the top on uh, this little false breakout right there i was looking for the break of 10. you know the fact is um it's very easy to overstay your welcome on these types of stocks and Usually I, I do finish the day on a parabolic stock having given back some gains. The challenge, uh, and this is always hard, is knowing when to walk away. You know, if you walk away too soon, you feel like you left a lot on the table. If you overstay your welcome and give back a bunch of profit, you feel like, you know, I stayed too late. So like right here, for instance, as it's coming up, uh, I, I'm honestly uh, not comfortable trading this year because I just would be too concerned about a nasty false breakout. The five minute is extended. You know, it's a bottoming tail candle here, but you've got two sort of double top dojis after a false breakout. Now, if you manage to get the dip off of nine, you're in great shape here. You can take profit if it breaks. If it doesn't break, you're still a winner. If you're not in and you buy here for the first trade, you know, or this is like your entry right here at 90, all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh, it's not breaking 10. And wait a second, there's a seller at 10. Is it going to break? And it does. But does it hold? Because what we often see when we do dip trades are a break below a whole dollar, and then I get long as it comes back through it. So this broke above a whole dollar and then dipped back below it, which can create a bull trap. And now as it's in the 90s, it's below the whole dollar. Now it's in the 80s. 
So that ends up becoming in that moment, a false breakout. Now you could have made money on a false, you can make money on false breakouts if you're quick, but not everyone's quick, not everyone's able to be quick. So it's gone a little higher. And now what you end up having are three green candles in a row and it's extended. So if it, you know, you got in there at 95 and all of a sudden it starts to pull back in a bigger way, you're gonna look at the five minute chart and realize, wait a second, this thing is super extended off the volume weight average price this isn't the place for me to be, um, you know, holding during a, a sharp pullback. I could end up giving back uh, a lot of gains. So it's always a challenge. Uh, and again, I'm maybe I end up, maybe this ends up going quite a bit higher and I leave money on the table. But this had um, a couple things going for it. It's a somewhat recent um, IPO. So IPO'd in uh, February. All-time highs is $8.59, and it just ripped right up to that level. It's got 31 million shares of volume now. So you can see the volume is cranking, which is good. That allows for larger positions, which is why I was able to do uh, quite well in my main account. But in the small account, uh, I, of course, did well on it. So let's dial this in um, a little bit more here. So I'm going to back this up to pre-market, which is where I took my first trade on it. Um, and I took my first trade as it was squeezing up right here. So as it started to move up right here, I, I hesitated at first. I wasn't, uh, you know, I was kind of like, I don't know if I should, you know, jump on this. But the thing is, as it squeezed up to five and then 550, uh, it became the leading gapper in the market. It, at that moment, it was the leading gapper in the whole market. It, was, it ended up gapping up 57%, but it was um, it didn't take much for it to surpass bond, which was up only 28%. So as it was squeezing up there, that's when I started thinking, all right, this is time for me to take this more seriously. It's our leading gapper. And if I don't jump on it, I'm going to miss the opportunity. So let's look at some of these micro pullbacks. We had a micro pullback right here at 521. We had another one right here at six. There was another one right here at 638. And then this was a little choppy right here because it's, it popped up to a high of 709 and then it dropped. And then right at the open, I took a dip trade on it and it squeezed into a halt at the open. So that dip trade was picture perfect. That was a full dollar a share on that dip trade, which was phenomenal. Now, because I had $8,000 in the account, I was able to trade this with between 900 shares once it got a little higher priced, above eight, to as much as about 1,500 shares when it was down in the fives and sixes. So I was able to trade it pretty aggressively, which was fantastic for me. And I had, the last trade I had taken uh, before that was PBTS. And I had bought PBTS with uh, 3,800 shares. That was the nice thing about that stock, which I really liked about it, was that... Um, Let's see, PBTS. I could take 4,000 shares of it because I have the buying power to do it. So 10 cents on that, you know, you're talking about a $400 winner. So when VRPX popped up, I was already kind of in this mindset of going all in. I pressed shift three, which is a hotkey that calculates a, a share size based on 90% of my cash balance, which is $8,000. So just to um, give you the account value. So $8,013.95. That was my starting balance today, up $2,335.90. That's going to give me uh, over $10,000 tomorrow on day 25. So now the account is up more than 100% uh, since I started the, the small account challenge. I started with just over $4,000. So it's now well over um, 1,000%. Uh, sorry, B, P, uh, PBTS. So anyways, this one, um, it didn't end up really giving any opportunities, but then VRPX started squeezing up. And so when this started squeezing up, some people mentioned it, they said, hey, look at VRPX, it had news at 9 a.m. I pulled it up, I saw, yep, there was news at 9 a.m. It's moving, it's squeezing, and that's when I started trading. So each of these pullbacks represented buying opportunities. I didn't get all of them, uh, but these this was the first, the second, the third, the fourth, maybe i don't there was another one there but the thing is i took three trades on bond one trade on pbts and then my fifth trade of the day was on vrpx so i traded more today but it was, I, it was absolutely the right move 
when you have something moving this quickly, you might say, oh, I've already taken three trades. I'm going to cut myself at three trades. You're, unfortunately, what you're doing is you're selling yourself short. You're capping your, your profit potential for the day. You know, yes, on the other hand, you're minimizing your risk. But if you're already green on the day, then your risk should be, well, I don't want to give back more than a certain percentage of my profit. And if I do, then that's the point where I stop. So for me, I set that mentally at 50%. If I give back half of my gains, then that's the time to stop. So I, did, I have not done that. I had one loss of a $37, $37, but that wasn't bad. So anyways, um, my last trade on it was um, a dip trade right in here for the break through the high. And that was uh, pretty nice as well. We got a, a high of 850 and I sold the rest of it. Uh, I sold it into that move there. Um, high was 845. But then sold as it came back down 831, 834, 833. The first trade of the day was on BON, B O N. This at the time was our leading gapper. It had earnings this morning, and I thought it was worth a stab because it was giving us an ABCD path. I also recognized a somewhat recent IPO uh, with all time highs at 1760. And so my trade on it was uh, a dip trade at. 1350 the half dollar and that was uh, right here on this red candle it dipped down to 1350 which was the volume weighted average price i bought the dip and then we got that nice uh, move there up to a high of 1415 and i took three trades on it. so my first trade um, was uh, 1349 to 1382 the second one was 1388 to 14 and the third one was 1371 to 1377. So three dip trades there. And with that, I kind of thought, all right, those are your three trades of the day. Um, so let's let's be careful. You're up 277 bucks. That's good. I mean, it's not phenomenal, but it's good. So let's not be too aggressive. Let's just take it slow. PBTS, that one came up. And I said, you know what? All right, I'll give it a stab. And I took a trade on it um, for the break of 76. I got in at... Uh, I believe it was 75 and stopped at 74. So those are my trades there. Um, yeah, so 76, 75. So I was in a 76 out of 75. That was right there. It ended up giving us that move at the open up to 89. And I was still watching it for a trade at the open because I knew that this one, if I could buy 4,000 shares, was probably my best shot at having like a six, seven, eight hundred dollar green day. And that's just because I, I really wasn't expecting. Um, such a phenomenal move on VRPX. That was unexpected. But I think that that also tells a little bit of the story of um, July and August and even December. If you look back at December, the day that ACY made its really big move right here, this was on December 28th. So, you know, isn't it kind of funny how in a typical lull, uh, which is between the holidays, uh, between Christmas and New Year's. Typically, the market's very slow, except all of a sudden, you had this stock that made a huge move, became, as it started to move, became obvious, and all of a sudden, traders were jumping on it, and next thing you know, you got some really good opportunities. So sometimes, um, because there's not a lot moving, when something does start to open up, it becomes um, exciting, and, and people jump on it. So now the high here is 10.08, and this five minute candle, you can see right here, it's a green five minute candle, um, 990 is the high. So this is where you're starting almost to have like a head and shoulders pattern, shoulder, head, shoulder. So you know, as it comes back up a second time, I, I get a little nervous about that as a breakout because you've got declining volume. Not only, you have declining volume on the, on the red candles, that's okay but you also have declining volume on the green candles, right? So technically this is a five minute setup. And then I would consider this to be the first pullback and then this would be the second. I wouldn't really say that this was too much of a pullback. It's not super well defined, although some might say it is. So if that was the first and that's the second and then this is the third. And typically the third pullback starts to get riskier. So I don't know, but you know, this is going to be one of those times where I'm going to say, uh, yeah, see, look at that. It's better to throw in the towel in the green, uh, 
and maybe be leaving a little money on the table that they overstay my welcome. So it's 10.15, I'm shutting it down. I'll live to trade another day. I'll be back at it uh, first thing tomorrow, which would be day 25 in the small account, which now as it's over 10,000 is not so small anymore. It's growing. But uh, yep, that's the plan. But of course, as always, in case you don't already know, trading is risky. The, uh, my results are not typical. In fact, the typical experience for most beginner traders is that they will lose money. You should assume, therefore, that you will also lose money. And with that assumption in mind, do yourself a favor and trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line. Now, I'm going to log out here. Um, I'm going to close this. And let's see. Um, Warrior Sim. All right. So um, I'm going to open this up here. Let's see. This is the right password. Let's see. No, I'm uh, going to try again. Oh, uh, no. Hmm. Um, now I can't remember my password. Okay, well, in any case, I was gonna log in and show you how uh, the simulator is uh, essentially, it looks identical to the software I'm using with Real Money. Uh, so the benefit there is if you can do it in the sim, it's a good proof of concept. So do yourself a favor and train the simulator before you put Real Money on the line. And with that, I'm gonna let you guys go and I will see you um, back at it first thing tomorrow morning for day 25. All right, I'll see you then. And that right there was an entire video with no ads. I don't monetize my YouTube channel with video ads, which means you guys get to enjoy the content. But do me a favor, please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know that this channel is the channel to watch if you wanna learn about day trading.